Hello there. Today I want to make a set review of One Night in Karazhan. Let's get right into it. So the set has 45 cards and a very important aspect that I want to talk about is card review in general and like first looks. Every single time they announce a new set, very very rarely people are like, oh I'm so excited for this set. Oh I'm so hyped for this. They look at the cards and they see some bland cards and without being able to play them, it's very hard for the people to imagine them and to construct the future meta in their head. So they just rate them exclusively of like how they look first look. Like uh, people were hyped about uh, BRM only because of Emperor Torison, only to complain about the card afterwards. Same about uh, some other instances. And for example, League of Explorers, which balance wise was like really good. People were trashing it, people were saying it doesn't solve any problems of the game and it's, it will not do anything. So, to those of you that are upset about One Night in Karazhan, I'll just tell you this, just wait for the meta to, to settle. Let's see how one month after One Night in Karazhan happens, let's see how the game looks there. And then you can complain. I think that's only fair to give, to give Blizzard the benefit of doubt. There's no like flashy cards, there's, I mean, there's, there, there are some flashy cards, but there's very few flashy cards. And I think overall the expansion looks good. I'm not gonna like complain about it. I just am the kind of guy that waits for like one or two months to see how the meta goes. And afterwards I can give a good opinion. Same as I did with like Whispers of the Old Gods, which I said it was a good expansion overall. Now, let's just go into it and talk about the cards a bit. Enchanted Raven, one mana, two, two. One mana two is like good body, but uh, keep in mind that you will not always have this on turn one. Later in the game, it's not gonna be that good. It's not like even mana war. Mana war is like insane on turn one, but later on in the game, he's like meh. So you have to like account that. But uh, you have the combo with Mark of Isharge. Yeah, Mark of Isharge just uh, gives you like tremendous amounts of value. And in a Beast Druid deck, I think you have to play this card. It's not like something insane, but it's just well-statted. And uh, with Mark of Fisharge, it's really good because it's the equivalent of getting Trog into Totem Golem. It doesn't happen every game, but it happens quite a lot. Of course, this is easier to kill than Trog. Keep that in mind. 2 HP is way easier to kill than 3 HP. 3 HP is like what makes the 1 freeze really good on turn 1. But still, I really like the card. And Beast Druid has potential to be really good. Talking about Beast Druid, this card is the bomb. This is one of the cards that I'm excited to play with. This card is so insane. 5-5 five, five is usually like what you'd pay for 4 mana, let's say. And then for 2 mana, it summons a friendly beast that you already have on the board. It like creates a copy. So for example, if you have like a damaged one, it will recreate it with the damage on it. If you have like a buffed one, it will take with the buff too. So for example, if you have this, that is like a 4-4, you can just copy the 4-4 body, I think. Um, immediately, you see some synergies. First of all, Druid of the Claw, which you already play in your deck. Second of all, Tiger. People might start playing Strangle Torn Tiger in the Beast Druid deck. First of all, it's a really good card for aggressive mid-range decks, the Strangle Torn Tiger. And it has B synergy, same as in Hunter. It was played in Hunter, it might be played in Druid. With this card, sure, it's like almost an insta win. So Tiger is like already pretty good for 5 mana having the stealth. And then when you copy it, you copy with the stealth too. So you play the first Tiger, and then you play this, copy the Tiger with stealth, then attack with the first Tiger, and then the second Tiger cannot attack, but uh, it still has stealth, so it cannot be attacked either. And then you guarantee 10 damage to their face. It's like so insane. Yeah, this card is like looking really good for the Beast Druids. Moonglade Portal. An average 6 drop is 5-5 five, five worth of stats. That's like f 4 and a bit mana. 4 mana, kind of, I would say. That's how I usually like to look at it. A random 6 drop is worth like... 4, 5 mana, something like that, 5-ish five, five mana, a random 7 drop, 5 to 6 mana, kind of like that. And then you can heal 6 health on anything. This card looks good, but uh, I'm not sure where do you want to play it. 
Like the current York Druid doesn't really need heal. Beast Druid wants to be aggressive, they would rather play the Menagerie Warden. It might be one of the really good cards to pick out of Raven Idol when you're low on HP, but playing it in your deck, eh, I'm not sure. Kindly Grandmother, this card looks really sick, one of the other cards that I'm excited to play with. Again, it's the kind of effect that doesn't get people excited, but when I look at it and I see the value, I already like see some combos in my mind. Um, first of all, this will replace Alec in a fast meta, because Huntex did not really like playing Alec in a fast meta. Alec that has no impact on the board. This card, even though 1-1 one, one is not that great, you might make a deck that has, like, let's say, Abusives or Dire Falfas, but you don't even need that. You can just play it as a 1-1, one, one, and you will get some trades. Hunter has, like, a lot of problems with dealing 1 damage. They, they same as Dragon Warriors, have a lot of ways to deal 3 damage, and uh, they struggle sometimes taking the ping on some of the minions. That's why you are playing... Flame Juggler in Camel Hunter, even though Flame Juggler is like such a bad card that you don't even want to play. Bad as in, you don't want to like rely on the 50-50 RNG. So many times you need to deal that one damage. And this card is going to help you with that and then give you a free to body. Also is a beast, so sticks for Hunmaster. Hunter also like lacked early game. As I said like in the previous uh, review of the... Um, Whispers of the Old Gods, Call of the Wild is one of the best cards in the game. And the only issue that Hunter has, or had, is that uh, they were restricted in their early game. But yeah, this card is like really good. We'll see play for sure. Um, this card, it might look good, it might look flashy, but I don't think it will see play. Like for it to see play, you need to like kind of construct a deck against, uh, around it, which maybe will happen, maybe in like Yogan Load or some wacky Hunter deck. Like you need to play quite some secrets in your deck so that this card is viable. It's kind of like a mad scientist that... It's, no, it's kind of like a Secret Keeper, actually. I would like to compare it to Secret Keeper. Secret Keeper was good in Secret Paladin because she made use of the secrets that you were just drawing in your hand. If Hunter gets some sort of mysterious challenger, this card is gonna be nuts. But without having some more incentives to play secrets, I'm not sure if uh, Secret Hunter is gonna be that good because now it's not even a deck, so it has to like emerge first maybe some people will like find some interesting combinations with the card but i currently doubt it again if we get some sort of secret uh, of mysterious challenger or a way to get secrets out of your deck like mysterious challenger is a card that makes use of secrets out of your deck but then you could also draw the secrets if you draw them you, don't, you didn't like that so then you play a card like secret keeper that makes use of drawing secrets but imagine you can play secret keeper and you can play the cloaked huntress too what about that that would be pretty cool so you play Secret Keeper and then you play the Cloaked Hunters and you just buff the Secret Keeper. It's interesting, but 3-4 is nice for free. I still don't think it's gonna be that uh, impressive. This is one of the bad secrets, doesn't really look that appealing. A 4-2 Panther with Stealth is what? It's the 3 mana card, the 3 mana Panther. But nobody plays the Panther in their decks because it's not really worth 3 mana to play that 4-2 guy. It's 2 and a bit. So you pay 2 mana to get a 2 and a bit mana Panther. Of course when you look at it, it's like, oh you pay 2 mana and if they play a spell, which will happen, you get a 3 mana Panther. Value, right? Not really. It's not a bad card, but you'd expect more from Secrets. When you compare this with Freezing Trap and Explosive Trap, you'll realize like how bad this is. It's not insanely bad. Like you pay 2 mana for a 4-2 with Stealth. It's good. Like if the Panther would be 2 mana, you would play it in your deck. But this has a condition to it. You play the Secret and uh, they need to play a spell for you to get it. And if they have a minion turn, then you already waste 2 mana. If they have a spell... Uh, if the next turn they play a spell... You get value. So overall, it's probably gonna be okay. It's okay worth playing in your deck. In a hunt that doesn't really like playing secrets anyways. Not sure, probably not. But this Valet, this is like an interesting card. You know, we already know that dealing free damage is super, super powerful from the Blackwing Corruptor in Fire Elemental days. Um, now, how hard is it to control a secret? A secret that mages can control and make sure they control is Ice Block. Can can you play Ice Block in Tempo Mage? Yeah. Is it that great? Nah. Is this card that great 
to make it worth it to play Ice Blocks in Tempo Mage. The chance of you having Ice Block down and, play, and getting Medivh's Valet is not that high. This card will get its effect on like turn 4, 5, 6, and the body is not that great. The thing with Black, Blackwing Corruptor is that the body is also great. It might not be a bad card, but it's super hard to predict how viable it's gonna be. Like, first of all, we don't know for sure which are gonna be the top decks. And then we need to like see how many free HP minions they have, how many ways you have in mage to deal 1 and 2 damage to combine it with the potential 3 damage to like kill efficiently minions. A 2 free body for 2 is not that bad, but you'd prefer like a 4 5 body for 4 with this effect, because this effect usually comes after turn 3, because there's no way to get the secret on turn 1. You cannot like coin scientist and then trade with the scientist. Oh, in wild, this card is fucking bonkers. Because you play scientist and then, yeah, ideally, you coin scientist, trade scientist, play the Medivh's Valet. But in standard, this will not hit until like turn 4. If you draw it in the early game, you have to keep it in the hand. You don't want to play it on turn 2 usually. So, doesn't look that great unless we get uh, some cards that give you secrets. Maybe we'll see like the Kirin Tor Mage making a reappearance in the Mage decks. Maybe people are gonna start playing with Kirin, they're gonna play with this guy. Maybe, I can see some combos with this. It's just interesting, people need to explore this. But this card has potential to be explored. It's nicely costed, as I said. If they would make it 4 mana, it would be like way too strong. At 2 mana, you need to like think and make a deck that has this card in mind. You don't just fit it in a current deck. Fireland Sporter, I think, is one of the cards that you can fit in the current decks. I think you can fit it in, like, Tempo Mage. 5 damage and the 5 cost minion is pretty strong for, like, 7 cost. Um, yeah, 5 damage is, like... You see how strong 3 damage is? 5 damage just kills the minion. So it kills the minion and he plays a minion for you. A random 5 cost is, like, 4 mana on average. And... Um, Actually, there's not that much difference between random 5 and the random 6. Very little differences. So, yeah, it's kind of worth like 4 and a bit, or 4 kind of mana. So then you play, you pay 3 mana for 5 damage. That's almost like a fireball. It's pretty good. This card looks super strong. Also has potential to just kill your opponent directly. Top deck some damage late game. This will see play. Looks really good. Uh, Babbling Book is one of the cards that people say that it will see play. And I doubt it. I don't think this card will see play in Tempo Mage. This card, you can quote me on this, is garbage. It will only see play in some sort of Reno Mage, maybe even there they will not. You pay 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one, and then you add the random mage spell to your hand. This card is only good, only worth it, if you get a spell that you already have twice in your deck. Or if you play it in a Reno deck. But excluding Reno decks, well, is there any other situation where this card is good? Like, you need to get the card that you would already play in your deck. You need to get like a Fireball, you need to get the Frostbolt. If you don't get a spell that you already play in your deck, you just waste mana. A 1-1 one, one body is worthless, it's like Wisp. It's just worthless. And now people are gonna say, oh, Mage has really good spells, he will definitely play this. I mean, if you want Arcane Explosion, play Arcane Explosion in your deck. If you want the Polymorph, play Polymorph in your deck. But the randomness from this card makes it super bad. If this, card, if this card was Discover, that's a big difference. With Discover, this card would be like really nice. Because you will often be able to pick a good card that not only fits your situation, but maybe if you are in a spot where you just want some value, you can get like the third Frostbolt, the third Fireball securely. And not get like Shatter and like uh, other bad spells. You'll say even Secrets are good. Yeah, but you don't play Secrets in your Tempo Mage deck. And this is like playing 4 mana for secrets. You pay 4 mana for a secret and for a 1-1. One, one. You are not, never gonna do that. You don't play... Like, it's better just play the secret by itself. The effigy or counter spell or whatever. And you still don't wanna do that because it's like too expensive. So, yeah. I predict this card is gonna be garbage in Tempo Mage. And only playable in some sort of Reno deck. Maybe I'll be wrong. We'll see. I cannot be right on every card. People will use this material to code for me, but I doubt it. I doubt this card is going to be good. Um, Nightbane, Te Nightbane Templar. Okay. 2-3 for 3. Pretty expensive. 
So if you don't have a dragon in your hand, this card is shit. So that means that it has to be really good if you have a dragon in your hand. Let's analyze. You get 2 1 1 whelps. That's pretty nice. You play into swipe. But there is another. There is already a free mana card that uh, summons a 1 1. Let me search for it. It's called Razorfen Hunter. Razorfen Hunter is a free mana 2 3 that gives you a 1 1. Well, this card gives you two one ones. How big is the difference between this and Razor Fan Hunter? It's one one extra, so like zero point something extra. Is that making this worth it? It's barely worth it. I'm not sure. Body wise, it looks weak. But now, let's be a little bit more analytical. We're talking about Paladins. If you're considering Master for Battle, which is one of the best cards ever, ever printed, people were not seeing the power of Master until they actually got to play with the card. It gives you like a Light Justice that is worthless, and then like free one ones. Why is that good? It's not. In many classes, it wouldn't even be good. In Paladin, they have Blessing of Kings and Uldaman that follow up on turn four. So if you can guarantee a one one body sticking, that's really nice. This card has a better body than Master for Battle, but doesn't give you the weapon. The weapon was pretty good. The 2-3 body is also nice. If people manage to make an aggro-ish Paladin with Blessing of Kings and Uldaman that also manages to run Dragons, this card might be good. Again, it's not that much better than Razor Fan Hunter, but that extra 1-1 one -one might be the difference between one of your minions sticking and not. It's very hard for them to deal with 3 minions, it's easier for them to deal with 2, for example. And even though the 1-1 one -one body is shitty, if you manage to Uldam on it or Kings it, you get back the value. Like, this card, if you have a dragon in your hand, it's a bit above what you pay for. A bit. If you don't have a dragon, it's way lower. But, Uldaman is the card that if you have a target for Uldaman, a 1-1 one -one body specifically, the amount of value that you get from the Wuldamon or from the Kings is like so insane that it makes up for like this card being just meh. So yeah, I'm interested to see if people manage to build decks with this card in before Dragon Agro Paladin. <laughs> um, this card doesn't look that appealing to me. A random 2 cost minion is worth 1 mana. Word, sorry. Um, we know that from the Druid card, the Mounted Raptor. Oh no, the Mounted Raptor summons a 1-1, one, one, a 1 cost minion, never mind. A 2 cost minion is actually free too. Uh, yeah, a 2 cost minion is worth like 1.5 mana usually. It's nothing like really spectacular. And on turn 4 you, with Paladin you already have like way too many plays, right? They, you already have True Silver, you already have Consecration. And buffs wise you already have Uldaman and you already have Kings. Comparing this to Uldaman, if you Uldaman a 1-1 one, one, you get the plus 2 plus 2 and you get the free 4. So, the difference between a 3 4 and a 3 2, how big is that? It's pretty big. But the thing is that this card is more reliable than Uldaman. It can buff anything. It doesn't need to be like 1 and 1. It can be like. You can even buff Uldaman with this. You can buff Uldaman to like a 5 6. Actually, this card is not that bad. Hmm. Very interesting. Because, like, it's less impactful than Uldaman, but it's easier to activate it. Because you can target anything, not only, like, shitty minions. But with Uldaman, you can also target opponent's minions. And that kind of, like... Um, I mean, you can do it with this too, but it doesn't really help you. Um, I still don't think it will be that great. But it's not, like, super awful or anything. Ivory Knight, this card is, like, pretty badly started for 6 mana. If it's gonna see play, it's gonna see play as a one-off. I don't think people are gonna play two. They already have like way too many heals in Paladins. You already need to like decide which heals you wanna play or not. Paladins have like a lot of heals. They might even have more heals than priests. People are complaining about this, but uh, I think the reasoning why priests don't get more healing is because they have Okenai. And they have the new spell that does the same thing as Okenai does. So if priest gets more heal, then Okinai is gonna be broken, and Okinai is like classic set, so it will stick forever. Maybe if they will somehow rotate Okinai, then they can give priests some more heals. 
We're gonna get to the priest soon. But Paladin got some interesting cards. Just interesting cards. Let's see what people like manage to do with them. We can analyze the classes overall afterwards. Now priest. Class that people are complaining the most about. They're saying that priest needs like a, f a two drop that is like a free four or something like that. I'm like, are you guys serious? Like, priest at the moment is not that awful. Like, yeah, it's a bad class, but it's not as bad as people already make it seem it is. If they will get some really good cards, then they will be OP. Like, in wild, priest is one of the best card decks, if not the best deck. So, Blizzard need, is just like very careful with what they give priests. I agree that they gave them like shitty, shitty cards, but most of the classes didn't get like amazing cards. Um, they're just interesting cards overall and people need to like make use of them efficiently to gain their value. It's same as League of Explorers, until people will manage to like figure out how to use the Tomb Pillager and stuff, people are gonna be like, ah, it's a 5-4 body. Uh, it's just... Just a bad body. Like, yeah, we have to wait and see. Now, let's see what we can do with the priest cards. Purify. Best two synergies. Eerie Statue, Ancient Watcher. If you play it on the Ancient Watcher, you get like a Yeti. You have to invest two cards, but you also draw a card. So, kind of makes up for that, but not really that great. It's still a bit better than Yeti because you can play Watcher on two. And then purify on free, so you get the Yeti one turn earlier. So it's way more impactful than if you than if you would play it on turn four, and you get the card draw, which cycles your deck. Um, now seven seven, the Yeti statue. You invest six mana. It's again like pretty good investment for what you get. Silencing Yeti statue is actually even better than silencing Watcher. Maybe people will like make a deck with like this and like Spellbreaker and just like a Silence Priest. I don't know. Might work. It's not like the worst card ever. That is pretty bad, yeah. Priest of the Feast. Free 6 is a really good body for 4 mana, but the effect doesn't really help that much. Priest doesn't really need this kind of healing. They will need like a way to impact the board. On the other hand, Onyx Bishop is, I think, really good. He's 3-4, which is 2.8 mana or something like that. Then you play the rest to get the Resurrect Priest card. It's really insane if you get it with the uh, Injured Blade Master. It's really insane if you get it on Sylvanas. So, maybe in a Priest deck that where you play only good minions, you can find like ways to overwhelm them with Onyx Bishop and Resurrect. People are gonna try this. Monster Reborn Priest from Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, this isn't a, a good card. I don't think the Priest cards are that outrageous as the community makes them seem like. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Even though it's well statted and it would be like really good in other classes. Purify, you need to like build a specific deck for it. You would never play it in your own deck, obviously. Unless you like... You need to build a new deck, and now the question is how good is gonna be this how good is new, this new deck gonna be? We'll have to wait and see. And Onyx Bishop is also for Resurrect Priest. The Priest didn't get any cards that help their current versions. They just got a good card for Resurrect Priest and like a new, a card that creates a new archetype. Did they really need this? I don't know. Maybe instead of like um the priest of the feast, they could have gotten a two drop and then people would be very happy. But then Priest might be too good if they would have a 2-drop that like trades on board and like does zombie chowish things. So I'm not sure. Personally, I don't really like Priest that much. I'm not in love with Priest, so I'm like, whatever. I just want to get good content overall. Swashbuggler. This is kind of like um, the um, Undercity Huckster, but gives you the card instantly. One mana cheaper. The issue is that 1-1 one, one is like a super bad body. The difference between 1-1 one, between one, one and 2-2 two, two is like massive. You really want 2 health on your minions usually. At 1 health they're like super easy to kill. So... I don't know. We already know that Burgle is a card that is not worth playing because it's just bad. So that what does that mean? I think it means that 
if you wanna play, wait, if you wanna play with a real, a real peddler, you have to play two hucksters and you have to play two swashbugglers. But is that overall good enough? Somebody made the math on the burglar that uh, on the peddler that if you reduce one card, it's already worth it. But to get good value and to make it worth it to just build a whole deck around this synergy, you probably have to reduce two cards. To also like make up for the shitty stats for for this and under city huckster. So now the only question is: is this plus huckster enough to make a deck like that? Because burglar is too shitty to be played. Again, we have to wait and see. But it has potential. It's an interesting card. In pirate decks, it will probably not see play. So it just is playing rogue and is a pirate on the plus. Deadly fork. 3 2 is like 1 point something mana. And then for the other 1 point something mana, you get the fire war axe to your hand, which you also have to play for free mana. So it's overcosted by 1. But again, rogues have deadly poisons and like. Uh, they don't have blade flag anymore, but they have poison as a way to like buff their weapon. In a way, I think it's a bit too expensive what you get here. It's a bit too slow. People are saying, oh, you, you coin this on free and then you play the weapon on free. Yeah, but half of the games you don't have coin. If you have coin, you would rather just wait for turn three and coin the four. That's like a higher impact. I'm not sure if it really fits and if it's what this deck needs as a free drop. Maybe. It will see some play in some meta games, but I, I'm not fascinated by this card. Again, people might find some ways to use mediocre to bad value cards in like good decks. Like this card might see a lot of play. I don't know. There are like a lot of bad cards that see play just because there's no other alternative. But overall, this card is not like something uh, spectacular. This card I already talked about. Super good statted, but you need to like get cost reduction and you need to create a new deck around this. If not now, I really hope that in the next uh, expansion they're gonna get some more tools to like make the Ethereal Peddler Rogue viable. Really hope for it. Spirit Claws. <sighs> I mean, what are the efficient ways of getting spell damage on turn 2? If you manage to get this into like spell damage, then this card is bonkers. It's like better than Fire War Axe, literally. So, let's search for spell damage. I think it's... First of all, you have the totem, but that's only a 1 in 4. I don't think you wanna like Gamba like that. Then you have like Talnos and Cobalt Geomancer. Well, I'm not sure. If people are gonna build a deck with this kind of thing, maybe like a spell power shaman deck where you can play like uh, value things like Forked Lightning and stuff. Hard to say. This card's. This card is pretty bad. 3-4 um, three, is worth less than 3 mana. So you'd need to get like 2 hero powers to make this worth it. Worth it. I don't know. I mean, you have to play this. It's under-costed. Uh, it's over-costed, sorry. Then you have to play two spells while this doesn't die, then you get some sort of value, some resemblance of value. I'm gonna say that this card is garbage because Shaman has way more tools at, the, at their disposal. As long as Tusker and other boys are gonna be a thing, it, you have no reason to play the Wicked Witch Doctor. When those cards cycle, we'll have to wait and see. Maelstrom Portal, it's kind of like a better mage spell, a better arcane explosion for shamans, no overload, and gives you because it is better than arcane explosion because it gives you a one drop. A one drop is usually like two one. That's the average attack to to health ratio. Is it that appealing? Is it that exciting? Eh. Again, Spell Power Shaman, but I don't think it's gonna be good. Malkazar Seam discard is exciting for Zoo players. 1 mana 1 free is not that great, but if you have Soulfire, if you have Doomguard, if you have Librarian, you're gonna get value. And now you're gonna think, Librarian? 
You wouldn't play Librarian only for this. Yes, you're right. You wouldn't play Librarian only for the Malkazar simp. But you have the Silver Whale Golem. Together, I think Disco Lock is gonna be a thing. Or Discard Warlock. Um, yeah, I really think he's gonna be strong. You already have a lot of early game minions. And you already wanted to play Soulfire. I don't think it's that great to play Soulfire in the current zoo version. But in the Discard Warlock version, Soulfire is like super powerful. And you can make use of the discard mechanic to either draw cards or um, summon this minion. Okay, let's analyze this more, a bit more in depth. Drawing a card as a zoo is not really that great because you have low mana minions. And you also have Doom Guards, which um, you do not want to have when you have a lot of cards in your hand. But if you play this card and play Sofa and then this card sticks for a Doom Guard, then even if the Doom Guard discards cards, you're gonna keep drawing cards. And if you discard this card, you're gonna summon it. It kind of resembles one of the mechanics that uh, was really strong in Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, yeah, it looks really nice. I think people are gonna be able to make a discard warlock around this card and this card. Already having Soulfire, Doomguard and Librarian. It's gonna look way different than the current zoo because you have to like feed Librarian, feed the Malkazar and feed the free drop. And then you also want to like play a lot of ones and then play some forks to catalyze. I'm not sure if you're going to play like councilman and stuff in that sort of version. In gang boss is still a bit too good to not make the cut, but we are we are going to see. It's going to look way different than the average zoo. That's what I want to tell. But yeah, it looks nice. Also like I don't think you want forbidden ritual with this kind of uh, deck by the way. It contradicts Forbidden Ritual is good when you top deck it, when you don't have other options and you want to go like, you play your whole hand and then you have Ritual left and then you play Ritual and then you fill your whole turn and the next thing you get like a Doom Guard and you push some damage. But with this card, with drawing so many cards, you'll probably not have like a good turn where you can play Ritual and maximize the value out of the Ritual. Ritual is useful because it gives you like bodies, but this card is like a one free body which you can use. You can probably just play this, Flaming, Voidwalker, uh, possess villager and just ditch the squires or something like that. We'll see. I I will build a discard warlock. I'm very hyped for that. Uh, Karakazan is just like a bad force of nature, right? You have to compare how good it is to get a one one and a three three over two two twos. And even though a three three is like really nice compared to a two two, a one one is like super shitty compared to a two two. So I don't think this card is gonna be good. People are saying, oh, you're gonna play it in Reno lock. I don't know. I don't think Reno lock is gonna be that good. I think Standard Zoo and the Discard Zoo are gonna be like the things to play in Warlock. Reno might still get some good cards from neutrals and stuff that they might play. Is Karakiazan good enough to make the cut? We'll have to wait and see. Fool's Bane, unlimited attacks on each turn. It's pretty interesting. That's how I wanted most of the weapons to be. That's how I wanted Doomhammer to be, for example. I also said that weapons are flow, have some flaws in their design. They are costed this cheap because you're supposed to attack minions, and then when you attack a minion, you take the damage back. They are supposed to be costed and statted in a way as if you attack face, you lose value. That's very important for how weapons are supposed to be, in my opinion. While Doom Hammer incentivizes you to just go for face and put 16 damage to their face. Fool's been, on the other hand, kind of like a brawl if you have a lot of HP. If you have a lot of HP, this card is really strong. Allows you to swing the fiery war axe four times. You can swing it how many times you want to. Issue is that it's expensive. Not sure. Again, super hard card to evaluate. Just looking at the cost, I'm like five mana, too much. But then, does Warrior have that many five mana cards? Not that many. They don't have Belcher anymore. They only play Brawl on turn five, right? Most of the time. Do you really want to kill minions? Uh, I don't know, this card... If it was like 4 mana, it could even see playing Dragon Warrior. Because like in Dragon Warrior, you want to like kill their board and put pressure on their face. But you already have enough weapons in Dragon Warrior, yeah, but... Even in an aggressive deck, just killing, using weapons to kill their minions is not really bad, but... Now the question is... How much is 5 mana? You can compare to the rogue... To the rogue weapon. Looking at the rogue weapon... It's exactly the same. It's just Assassin's Blade. 
The issue is that Huyeg doesn't have deadly poison, and Warrior already has access to better costed uh, weapons. Comparing this to Deathbite, Deathbite is like way better, obviously, but Deathbite was like the best card in the game for a long time. Looking at this in Assassin's Blade, I'm still not sure if this is gonna see play. But, again, really interesting design. I like it. Like the design. Iron Forge Portal game for Armor Summon Random Forecast. Random Forecast is like a bit better than free, a free drop. It's free point something. Then you pay two point something to get... Uh, no, you pay one point something, right? Yeah, one point something to get uh, four armor. Which is fine. Again, Warriors don't really have five drops. If they get a four and some armor, it's not bad. Seems fine. Will see play? Again, I'm not sure. It's very hard to evaluate these kind of cards. Like, you will not play it in Dragon Warrior. If you play it, you'll be gonna play it in like Cthulhu Warrior, Control Warrior. Does Control Warrior need a four drop? Does he need armor? Probably not. Does Cthulhu need it? Probably not. It's just a card that might see play at some point because it's just a decent card overall. Protect the Knight on the other hand is a card that might see a lot of play. You can compare it with Unleash the Hounds, but instead of Charge they have Taunt. It's, I would say, a bit weaker than Unleash the Hounds. Like, you will never play Knife Juggler in Warrior to make uh, this, the Juggler Protect the King combo. Or maybe you will, but probably not. This card has really good combo with Brawl, on the other hand. On turn 8, you can give yourself a 50-50 for a 1-1 one -one with time to survive, the Brawl. Because you summon the same number that they have. Uh, that's if you have empty board. If you have 1 minion, 2 minions, the math goes up and you're more favored than 50-50 to even win it. It's a good card. People are saying this plus bolster is OP. But I think this is going to be better as played as a standalone and not really with bolster. I don't think you're going to play bolster only for this synergy and you don't really have enough towns to make town warrior a thing yet. But again, really nice design. I like to say it. I like to say it a lot. You can also just compare it to Frost Nova, by the way. It's very hard to people, for people to deal the one damage if they don't have like a juggler or like some AoE. And it can be like a Frost Nova, something like a Frost Nova for Warriors. Because you just stall your opponent's minions from attacking. Not sure if it's gonna be that great, but it's interesting design. And that's what I wanna see, with Adventures especially. I wanna see interesting design. Arcane Anomaly. Whenever you cast a spell, give this minion plus one health. It's a very interesting card. The thing is that... It's a bit worse than Mana Worm, because Mana Worm, first of all, had a, a lot of HP, but had very bad attack. But he could go to a very good attack value, while this is, stays at 2, has very bad HP, but it can go to a very good HP value. How much do you want to get out of this to make it worth it? A 2-2? Two -two? A 1-1 one -one on 2-2 two -two is already good. So playing it this and one spell is already a good starting body. How much do you want to make it to like get tons of value? 2-4. Is how, how reasonable it is to play free spells while this guy is on board. Not that easy. This card might still see play. It's a wonder that might see play at some point. Like, it will not see play in Zoo. It will not see play... I don't think it will see play in Rogue. In Tempo Mage, you could play it. In Druid, you could play it. Play this with like innervates and like teachers and buffs and stuff. I don't know, again, like a card that just leaves players the options of using it and maximizing the value out of the card. And maybe in three months we're gonna look at this card and be like, oh, this card was great because people use it in this deck, this deck, and this deck. I like about this expansion that it gives you like a lot of cards that are niche. There's some cards that just create their own. Archetypes, there's just card. There's some very few cards that like help the current archetypes, but most of the cards are just like niche that might fit at some point because they have good value and they offer something. I'd rather play loot hoarder, but still, one mana draw a card if you find a way to make this annoying enough to be killed. 
zero to body might help you but even in like partying with kings and stuff it's not really the best body ever if it was like a zero seven body then it would be like insane because you could like start buffing it and shit i'm not sure doesn't look that good i don't, I don't think it's gonna be good this card is also like super slow two mana one three mega slow this card some people are excited about it because it can guarantee you a hunt master but I think that you'd rather play that 3 mana 2-5 if you really want the Hunt Master to go out, go off. 1-3 body is absolute crap. It's like mana worm without getting anything on it. You get 2 on 3 bodies that are beasts. Still don't think this card is good. I might be wrong, but it looks shit. It looks like shit. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be good. Usually on towns you want uh, more health than attack. And you want more health than 2. 3 to town for 2 is okay, but what they could want to play this? I cannot think of any deck that wants to play this. Bolster Warrior or what? <laughs> yeah, nothing really needs to play it. Violet Illusionist. During your turn, your hero is immune. Even though it's like n not badly costed, it's costed very offensively, but still okay ish. How are you gonna make use of this? The first thing that comes into my mind is. Weapons, that's like one of the ways you take damage on your turn. So how good is this in like a weapon deck? And what do we mean by a weapon deck? Do we play war gear? Like, you can imagine already the Violet Illusionist plus the warrior 5 mana weapon that can attack how many times you want. You can imagine this with Doomhammer. So the main synergies of this is weapons. Again, how good is this card? Do you want to play this card to get value of your weapons? And then like, what are you going to do with this value? Usually, the damage you take from the weapons is irrelevant because you get board control and then you win through board control. This is not that impactful on board, but then helps you not take damage. How are you going to use that aspect? How are you going to transform not taking damage into value? Zubot. Okay, I'm going to talk about all these give a dragon and stuff synergies at once. I'm gonna take them uh, now and then not talk about them afterwards. So, Dragon, Beast, Murloc. First of all, the only Murloc that you can play in most of the decks is Finley. Finley is like the only Murloc that sees play at the moment that you want to play in your deck. Unless we are talking about Core Light Oracle, which can be played in like uh, Freeze Mage alongside Alex Traza to get a Dragon for the curator, but we can talk about that when we get to the curator. But again, just about, uh, I want to talk about Zubot and I want to talk about the Menagerie magi Magician. So first of all, 3 mana, 3, 3, not badly costed. You get plus 1, plus 1, it's a bit better than Northshire, than, uh, no, sorry, than uh, Shattered Sun Cleric. It's how the old Cleric used to be. If you buff only 1 minion, if you buff 2 minions, it's already good value. So, sometimes you're going to have Finley, but often not. But you could have a beast and a dragon on field. The issue is that if you have those, you should already be winning. When is this card most effective? Dragon Warrior, if you play turn 1 Philly, turn 2 Fairy Dragon. Then this card is like nuts on turn 3. How many times are you going to have this start and not win already? This looks kind of like a win more card, the Zubot. Again, maybe people are going to find some combinations with this, but uh, it's very hard. You also have, you have a lot of beasts and a lot of dragons for like all the costs. So people could like just uh, put together a Beast Murloc uh, Dragon build. But I think optimally you would only play Finley for the Murloc, from the Murloc side. And play the good, uh, play this in like Dragon decks. Does, dra does Dragon Warrior need to play this? No, but well, maybe some other Dragon decks do. Maybe some new Dragon decks will just uh, rise from the ashes. Um, but yeah, if you can buff two, if you can find a deck that consistently has two out of those three archetypes on board when you play this card. So there, you play something on turn 1, something on turn 2. This card is nuts. This card is even better than the first one because it buffs them by plus 2, plus 2. For 4-4 four, four is 3 mana and a beat. So you only pay 1 mana and a beat to get plus 2, plus 2 and charge. This 2 attack is chargeable by the way because you assume that you already had a minion on the board that survived. So if you have two of those again that stay on board by turn 5 when you play this card, it's absolutely insane. How many times is this going to happen? Very, very rarely. And can you make a deck that can make this happen? Maybe this Menagerie thing is going to be worth playing if you can 
get the conditions of having a beast and dragon. Arcano's myth is bad. Uh, this is pretty bad too. You get like a slightly better Druid of the Claw. Actually, it's way better than Druid of the Claw. Between 6 and 7 health, there's like a big difference. It's a better Druid of the Claw town form with no charge option if you have a secret. Ah, oh, secret X. Again, super hard to say. Can you be like... If you can be like a Tempo Mage with like Kyurin and stuff, maybe the Avian Watcher is going to be good enough to be played. 4-7 four, four, is pretty nice, I have to say. 4-7 with Taunt. If you can play like Kirin and then like get the Ice Block and then like play the 2 mana 2-3 free, guy. Again, maybe a secret Mage deck is going to grow from the ashes. Bookworm is pretty slow. I'm not sure about this card. It's one more HP than Kodo, but one more mana, but also kills one damage bigger. It will happen often on turn 6 that they have something with free attack that they can kill, but then you'd rather play Blackwing Corruptor and just win the game. Uh, I mean, this is like attack, not health. But still, usually they play like free freeze and stuff. There's not that many minions that uh, Corruptor cannot kill and this can kill. There are some though. But I think this is going to be good for like uh, slower co dragon control decks, not for like the dragon warrior. This is like again really cool design. I like to see this kind of cool design. 3 3 is usually worth 2 and a bit mana. So you pay a lot of mana to destroy a minion and then resummon it. So you, you need to get value out of it. There's two ways you get value out of this. First of all, you kill one of your opponent's minions and then you silence this guy. If you manage to do this, this it's insane value. You can combo it with the priest card and draw some cards too. But uh, jokes around. You can also use it on Sylvanas. Right? It's really nice with Sylvanas. Really nice with Cairn maybe. The thing is that you also lose the stats. It's a new mechanic. It's interesting. I want to see how this plays out. Arcane Giant is a card that can see play in a lot of decks. All the decks that play Yogg can also play in Arcane, Gi Arcane Giant. Yogg is usually good if you cast like 8 or 9 spells. So if you cast 8 or 9 spells, this is going to be 3 or 4 mana. Maybe even 2 mana at some points. Rogue can use it, Tempo Mesh can use it, Druid can use it. Looks interesting. Really looking forward to this card. Again, I like the design of it. Morot is absolute garbage. It's like Imastag is better. Barnes, I already talked about Barnes like a lot on my stream when people ask me. Uh, I think Barnes is going to be like a really solid card, mostly solid in like Unzov Paladin if that's gonna see play, and uh, Hunter, you're gonna play this in Hunter for sure, Paladin and Hunter are like the best decks for this, you can get the uh, Tyrion, the Ragnaros and stuff in Paladin, but a lot of people I think wrongly have said, oh this is OP because if you get any minion, a 1-1 one, one plus 3-4 it's Yeti, first of all, 3-4 and 1-1 one, one is not 4-5, four, 4-5 five. Four, five is way better than a 3-4 and a 1-1, one, one. secondly, Yeti, you don't even play it in your deck. You don't play Yeti in any decks. So just playing Yeti as a legendary in your deck doesn't really make sense. So you need to get something on the 1-1 to make value out of Barnes. And that's mostly Death Rattles, but can also be like... If you get like a charge, it's borderline. I guess a charge 1-1 one, one and the 3-4 is kind of like Yeti, but in a different way. But you have a lot of good cards in like Hunter and stuff. Yeah, mostly Death Rattles that you can abuse. This card is like bad in my opinion. You don't want to make your deck bigger. In every card game you want to have like a shorter, a smaller deck because you want to have consistency. And that still applies to Hearthstone I think. You just don't want to have decks with 50 cards, 60 cards because then the, the quality of the cards goes down. Also this applies uh, the standard deck building uh, rules. So it will only give you legendaries that you don't already have in your deck. So you get shit ones, because the the good ones you'd already play. So you get something that you wouldn't play in your deck. Yeah, I don't see this card being that good. Also, like, the 5-6 is just bad for 5. It's Pit Fighter. You wouldn't play Pit Fighter in your deck. It's good for new players. The Curator is a very interesting design card. Again, with the Murloc Dragon and uh, Beast Synergy. It's kind of like an Ancient of Lore for mid-range decks. 
Is Dragon Warrior gonna play it? I'm not sure. They can have a beast if they play the Fierce Monkey. They can cut throw things for monkeys. They lose some value. So the question is, is playing Curator giving you that much value back? Maybe if you maybe you should play the other cards that also buff the Beast, Dragons and Moonlocks to make it uh, worth it overall. But maybe you can see like a different uh, Dragon Warrior deck with a new Beast, Dragon, Moonlock buff cards released. A more tempo based one. Um, yeah, Dragons is easy to have in your deck. Beast is also pretty easy and Moonlock Finley. So it might see playing some different Dragon Warrior. I don't think you can take this and just put it in the current Dragon Warrior. It doesn't fit. You'd rather play Malkorok instead. You'd rather play Onyxia. Uh, you'd rather play something with immediate effect. You'd play it in like a more grindy version where you can like abuse the Beast, Dragon, Murloc from your deck. Medivh, last card of the set, the party boss. I think this card is really nice. Again, super cool design. By design, I mean like uh, effect, not like the art. 7-7 um, seven, seven is, again, I, I really like to like math it out and take the stats, look at on average how much mana it is, and then like look at the effect on average how much mana it is, add them up and see if the card is worth playing. Sometimes the card is not worth playing and people still play because it just fits a mana slot. Like for example, if you have a card that is like worth 9 mana, you pay 9 mana for it, 9 mana cost, and it only gives you like 8.5 mana worth of stats. If there's just no other 9 drop in the game, you'd rather pay 9 for 8.5 than 8 for 7.9 or 8, right? That's the thing with Hearthstone. You don't have that much variety right now. So, for an 8 drop, you pay like 5.9, 6 mana, something like that for the 7-7. Seven, seven. And then you pay the rest for the weapon. The weapon is like summoning stone. I calculated that on average, if you manage to play Medivh, Medivh sticks one turn, and the next time you play one free mana spell, you already get your value back. And then the other two spells you play, you just get extra. So in a value deck, in a not super fast meta, this card is nice. In a super fast meta, this card is too slow to be played. But I really like the design of the card. And looking at the expansion overall, it offers a lot of interesting things for deck building. Like, this helps Beast Druid become a real deck. These two. Th so these two cards help Beast Druid, okay? This card helps Raven Idol. I'm doing a TLDR to end it. Um, this card helps the current Hunter and also fits really nicely with Barnes. So you're gonna see like a different Hunter, maybe with two Infested Wolves, maybe a more Houndmaster Reliant Hunter value deck where you can play like... Uh, the beasts and stuff. This card, nothing yet. Maybe Yog and Load. This card, nothing yet. This card might create a new mage archetype. A new secret mage with Kirin Tor Mage. This card fits the current Temple Mage. This card, Reno Mage. This card can make like a Dragon Agro Paladin that makes that makes use of like the four mana buff cards to like in, to like get value of the two one one wisps. This card is like another 4 mana buff card. Will it uh, be good enough to be played? Probably not, but we'll see. This card helps the healing decks, maybe as a one-off in like some of the decks. Really good card in Reno Paladin, for example, which might become a strong deck after this expansion. This card creates a new Priest archetype, the Silence Priest, which is probably not going to be good enough, but still. This card doesn't really do that much. And this card helps the Resurrect Priest. I can understand why Priest players are sad with these cards, but this is not like that awful. Um, this helps, this has synergy with Ethereal Peddler, which creates, which wants to create a new R-type, and this helps that R-type. Pretty cool, I like it. This could fit in some po at some point in like a very mid-range-ish meta, but I doubt it. This one wants to create Spell Power Shaman, but I'm not sure if it's good enough. It might see playing like Agar Shaman if people find a way to like get uh, spell damage off efficiently. This is too slow. It's also like pretty slowish. The Shaman cards are probably the worst from the entire class cards. People are complaining about uh, Priest, but I think the Shaman ones are even worse. This 
creates this card Warlock alongside this, which helps this card Warlock. Same pattern as in Rogue, we have a card that creates and a card that helps. And then this might fit in Arena Lock, but probably not. But still, just whatever card. This is like a very cool design card again. Assassin's Blade that can attack how many times you want. Might fit in like some new type of warrior deck. Maybe with like the neutral card that uh, makes you immune on your own turn, I don't know. This doesn't really do that much. And this is like a niche card. So Warrior also got pretty shitty cards. The good classes didn't get that good cards. Druid got really good cards for how good it already it is. But they got in a different aspect, which is Beast Druid, which is not really developed as much as like Yog Druid or Fanral Druid, because people don't even play Yog anymore. Or some of them do, some of them don't. Um, Arcana normally niche card, can fit in some decks, can work, is interesting card. This no, 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 no. No, this can be interesting, no, this can also be interesting, this can also be really nice in like the secret mage that I was telling you about, that was created earlier. Eh, niche, very niche, very niche, very niche, but interesting design, super interesting design, might see some playing like multiple decks and stuff, people are gonna like invent around it, absolute garbage, S super good card overall fit some niches, create some new decks, helps some new decks too. Helps new players. Interesting card, again, create some new decks and stuff. And same with Mediv, like, fit some interesting stuff. Overall, I like the expansion. Like, I see people hating on it, but overall, personally, I like it. And I think it's best if we wait, like, one or two months after the, the adventure is released to, like, start talking trash about how shitty the decks are and... Uh, how bad the expansion was because I don't think it's gonna be that bad or as bad as people make it seem there are like a lot of cards to be excited for and there's like a lot of cards with like unknown potential that we still need to discover and see what's the limit of those decks but yeah I'm super excited for it and uh, I wish you a really good day and uh, enjoy one night in Karazhan in like one week or whenever it goes out see ya guys